there, pals. You know how sometimes, even when we're trying our best to munch on the right things, we end up choosing stuff that might not be super awesome for our health? It happens. Sometimes it's because we genuinely don't know what's in our food, and other times it's because there's just so much confusing info out there. I mean, one day someone says, this is the best thing ever, and the next, oops, maybe not, right? It can get a little wild trying to keep up. And that's why today I've got a fun list to share with all of you. We're going to go through 10 foods and drinks, some of which might surprise you, that we might want to take a closer look at. You know, just to see if they really should be on our plates or in our glasses. Let's jump in together, shall we? By diving deep into what's on our plates, we can figure out if these items are the superheroes of the food world or maybe the sneaky villains. And don't worry, I'll break it all down in simple terms so by the end, we'll have a better idea of what might be a yes, a no, or even a maybe. After all, knowledge is power. And when we know better, we can make tastier and healthier choices. So grab a comfy seat, maybe a snack, hopefully one that's not on our list. And let's get the scoop on these 10 intriguing foods. Okay, so imagine this. You're strolling through the grocery aisle and there it is. That colorful can of soup looking all inviting. It's like it's screaming, pick me. I'm tasty and oh so easy for those super busy days. But let's put on our detective hats and look a bit closer, shall we? Many of these canned soups come with a sneaky side. For starters, they can be jam-packed with salt. Now, salt in moderation? Sure thing. But too much can have our blood pressure doing the cha-cha in ways we don't like. And then there are words on the label like enriched. Sounds fancy, right? But here's the lowdown. Enriched is kind of like a sneaky magic trick. Imagine if I borrowed your favorite toy, took some fun parts away, and then gave it back with just a sticker. That's what enriched is in the food world. They strip away the natural goodness and toss back just a tiny bit. And the story doesn't end there. Dive deeper into those ingredient lists and you might spot other things that could make our tummies protest. Nobody wants a grumbling tummy, especially when you're just looking for a quick meal. Plus, certain ingredients hiding in those soupy cans might not be the best buddies with our bones. So, the next time you're tempted to reach for that can of soup, remember our little chat. Maybe look for soups with simpler ingredients or even whip up a homemade batch when you have some spare time. Trust me, your body will high-five you for it. Picture this a fluffy, soft slice of white bread just waiting to be slathered with butter or jam. It's like a cloud you can eat, right? And who doesn't have memories of munching on sandwiches made from this staple? But here's the scoop. As dreamy as it seems, white bread might not be our best pal in the food kingdom. Remember the good old days when our grandparents would rave about the hearty, dense bread they grew up eating? Well, the white bread on our shelves today? It's not quite the same. To make more bread and make it super fluffy, manufacturers use a type of wheat that's a far cry from the traditional ones. It's like comparing your favorite hand-knitted blanket from grandma to a factory-made one. They both serve a purpose, but there's a depth and richness missing in the latter. Now here's the science I bit, but I promise to keep it chill. When we eat white bread, our bodies are like efficient machines, breaking it down super quickly. So quick, in fact, that the bread almost instantly turns to sugar in our bloodstream. Imagine pouring a sugar packet into your veins. Sounds intense, right? And while that sugar rush might sound cool for a minute, in the long run, it's not the best for our energy or mood. Some might tell you to make the switch to whole wheat bread, thinking it's a massive upgrade. But here's a tiny secret. They're more similar than you'd think. Whole wheat might have a tad more fiber and nutrients, but many of the commercial ones still have some of the same pitfalls. The bottom line? It's always best to know what you're putting into your body and maybe venture into trying other wholesome bread varieties. Happy munching. Is there anyone among us who hasn't succumbed to the tantalizing allure of a well-made tuna sandwich? 
especially on those afternoons where all you want is comfort, encapsulated between two slices of bread. Tuna, with its ocean-fresh flavor, delivers that comforting, creamy taste with a perfect chunky bite, making it a top contender in many of our mealtime lineups. However, as with many things in life, there's a but looming on the horizon. The unsuspecting shadow in our tuna tail is an element called mercury. Imagine, if you will, a friend that you enjoy seeing from time to time, but who, when around too frequently, becomes overwhelming and leaves you with a nagging headache. That's mercury for you. Here's the crux of the matter. Mercury is a mischievous guest that seems to have developed a liking for tuna, and this poses a concern, especially for certain groups like pregnant women. You know those friends who drop by unannounced and end up overstaying their welcome? Mercury is kind of like that, fine in small doses, but not something you'd want to deal with every day. It's important to remember that every good story has its ups and downs. While tuna is rich in proteins and offers a host of benefits, the lurking presence of mercury suggests that moderation is the key. Like many delightful things in life, Enjoying tuna in balance might be the golden ticket to reaping its benefits without the unintended side effects. Ah, the refreshing sizzle of a cold diet soda, especially when the sun is beating down and your thirst seems unquenchable. It tempts with the promise of guilt-free indulgence, all the flavor, none of the calories. It's a modern magic trick, or so it appears. But like many magic tricks, there's always something hidden up the sleeve. Peel back the label, and you'll often discover a cavalcade of artificial sweeteners. Think about it. Would you enjoy a spoonful of paint just because it was offered to you? Most likely not. And much in the same way, these man-made sweeteners, while providing the illusion of sweetness, aren't naturally meant for our body's consumption. The diet soda dilemma is akin to choosing between an original, timeless painting and a mere photocopy. From a distance, they might seem indistinguishable. But upon closer inspection, the original shines with depth, authenticity, and nuance, while the copy, despite its pretense, lacks the soul of the original. This comparison rings true for diet sodas as well. While the bubbly exterior might charm, the insides tell a different story. Not everything that offers an effervescent allure is golden. Sometimes it might just be a lesson in reading between the bubbles, understanding that our health deserves more than just a glossy facade. There's an undeniable magic surrounding potato chips. Just one glance at that brightly colored bag and you can almost hear them calling, tempting you with promises of crisp, salty goodness. And once you've started, stopping seems impossible. Each chip, with its flawless crunch and burst of flavor, feels like a masterpiece crafted to tease the senses. Yet behind this crunchy symphony lies a note of caution. The very thing that grants them that addictive texture, the oil they're fried in, isn't always singing the same heart-healthy tune. Imagine a blockbuster film trailer that's packed with all the exciting bits, leaving the actual movie feeling somewhat lacking. That's the chip conundrum. They promise the moon, but do they deliver? Turn any corner of the modern snacking world and you're greeted with a multitude of chip options. From tangy barbecue to sour cream and onion, the choices seem endless. But with ubiquity comes a challenge. How to enjoy without overindulging. These tantalizing crisps are like that friend who's always the life of the party. Fun in doses, but a bit much if around all the time. So, as you navigate this world where chips seem to be in perennial celebration, remember to invite them to your table as occasional guests. This way, you get the best of both worlds, savoring their delightful crunch while also keeping the balance in your diet. It's about enjoying the fiesta without letting it become a daily routine. Picture a crisp morning where the sun peeks through the curtains and the aroma of pancakes wafts through the air, beckoning you to the breakfast table. And as you take your seat, 
your eyes are instantly drawn to the glistening amber liquid that promises to make your pancakes complete, maple syrup. The genuine article, tapped directly from the heart of maple trees, is a testament to nature's splendor. It's thick, it's flavorful, and its sweetness feels like a cozy hug. But lurking in the shadows of this gastronomic fairy tale is the imposter, a syrupy villain often loaded with a concoction of sugars and unfamiliar ingredients. Imagine being promised a luxurious trip on a vintage steam train, but ending up on a rickety carnival ride instead. That's the letdown one can feel with these counterfeit syrups. Strolling down the breakfast aisle of most supermarkets is like walking through a gallery of syrup doppelgangers. Each bottle shines and promises the rich authenticity of maple, but not all keep this promise. These pretenders are often brimming with artificial sweeteners, colors, and an array of additives that make them a far cry from the tree tap treasure. Just like being gifted a sparkling jewel, only to later learn its mere costume jewelry, choosing the wrong syrup can bring about a twinge of regret. So, as you stand before that array of bottles, remember to be a discerning detective. A quick glance at the ingredient list can be the compass that steers you towards the genuine, heartwarming sweetness and away from the sugary pretense. Because when it comes to syrup, authenticity truly is the sweetest treat. Once upon a time, in kitchens long ago, the sizzling sound of food frying wasn't from today's familiar oils. Instead, most people used animal fats, like tallow, for their culinary adventures. The rich and hearty flavors these fats imparted were a staple in many households. But as time went on and the world expanded, there arose a need for something more abundant and accessible. Enter the oils from plants and seeds. Now, while these were bountiful and handy, there was a small hitch, their consistency. You see, unlike tallow that stands firm and solid at room temperature, these new oils were more like a free-flowing river, all slippery and liquid-like. In an effort to make these plant-based oils mirror the robust solidity of tallow, a culinary science experiment took shape, hydrogenation. This process was like a makeover for oils, making them thicker and more spreadable. But every silver lining has a cloud, and hydrogenation brought with it a sinister byproduct, trans fats. Now, if fats were a family, trans fats would be the unruly member everyone warns you about. They're notorious for being not so friendly to our health, and their reputation is such that we even had rules established to ensure they're declared on food labels. Here's where things get a tad tricky. While rules demanded transparency about trans fats, some crafty companies decided to play hide-and-seek. They'd proudly display zero grams of trans fat in big, bold letters, lulling you into a sense of security. But if you turned the product around and read the fine print, you'd often stumble upon the phrase partially hydrogenated. This phrase is basically a secret handshake that indicates the presence of trans fats. It's like when magicians divert your attention with one hand while the other does the trick. The same goes for these misleading labels, using serving sizes and other tactics to pull the wool over our eyes. So, the next time you're browsing the aisles, put on your detective hat and ensure you're not being taken for a ride by these label tricksters. All right, let's dive into the buzzing world of energy drinks. You've seen them, with their flashy labels and promises of boundless energy. Heck, Many of us have downed one before a late study night or a long road trip. At first glance, they seem like our knight in shining armor, swooping in to rescue us from our energy slumps. But let's pull back the curtain on these. Think of them as mini energy loans. You know how loans work, right? Borrow now, but pay back later, and usually with a little extra on top. Similarly, these drinks give a rapid surge of energy, but there's a catch. It's only borrowed time. Peek into their ingredients, and you'll see the culprits. Caffeine, which many of us know from our beloved coffee, 
and sometimes from a sneaky plant called guarana, which is like caffeine's intense cousin from the Amazon. To jazz things up further, these drinks sometimes toss in synthetic vitamins or heap on the sugars, trying to sweet-talk our taste buds and bodies. But here's another curveball, the ones that proudly claim to be sugar-free. They often sneak in even more caffeine or swap out natural sugars for artificial sweeteners, which come with their own set of concerns. So the big question, are they worth it? While they might seem like an instant energy booster, they're more like a short-lived fireworks show, dazzling at first but fizzling out soon after, leaving us even more drained. It's a wild ride, and one that's worth considering before popping open that can. Ah, fruit juice. It's often our morning sidekick, sitting pretty next to our breakfast spread. The vibrant colors, the promise of a fruity burst, it's almost like gulping down sunshine, isn't it? But let's pause and peel back the layers. Even though it's squeezed from our beloved fruits, many store-bought juices come with a not-so-sweet twist. Imagine a fruit. Now take away all its fiber, some of its vitamins, and what are you left with? Essentially, a sugary liquid. And that's what many store juices turn out to be. They might be stamped with made from real fruit, but by the time they land in our glasses, they're chock full of added sugars, rivaling even some sodas. Let's dive a bit deeper. You might have seen the word pasteurized on juice labels. Sounds fancy, but what it really means is that the juice has been heated to kill off any germs. While this makes it safer to store for longer, the heat wave often waves goodbye to many of the natural nutrients. The result? A beverage that's lost its nutritional powerhouse status, becoming more of a sugary shadow of its former self. It's like watching your favorite movie, but with all the main scenes cut out. Refreshing? Yes. As good as the whole fruit? Not by a long shot. So next time you're reaching for that juice carton, maybe it's time to ponder over what's really in that glass. So, you know those thin slices of ham, salami, and turkey that make our sandwiches super delicious? Those are deli meats, and boy, they can be a topic of debate at the dinner table. On the surface, they look innocent enough. Just some convenient slices of meat, right? But dig a little deeper, and you'll find there's more to the story. A lot of these meats come packed with salt, and while a dash of salt is okay, too much can be like an uninvited party crasher. But the salt is just the tip of the iceberg. Delve deeper into the ingredients list, and you may come across a cocktail of chemicals, unexpected sugars, and mysterious names like monosodium glutamate. Now, that last one isn't a villain from a comic book, but rather a flavor enhancer that works by bamboozling our taste buds into thinking something's more delicious than it actually is. But before you chuck out all your sandwich dreams, there's a silver lining. In our health-conscious world, the market is adapting. Now, there are deli meat options that have waved goodbye to these sneaky additives. Imagine deli meats that are as close to their natural state as possible, with minimal processing and no funny business. These are usually found lounging in the aisles of health-focused stores, waiting to be part of your next wholesome sandwich. So while it's good to be alert about what goes into our deli meats, it's also heartening to know that with a little research and careful selection, we can still enjoy them without the extra baggage. All right, my health-conscious friends, we've journeyed together through the intricate maze of these specific foods, shedding light on their hidden aspects. The real nugget of wisdom here? Those little labels on the back aren't just there for decoration. When we pause and truly understand what they're telling us, we're taking steps to nourish ourselves in the best way possible. Always remember, being informed isn't just about book smarts. It directly influences our daily choices and well-being. So, as we gear up for more culinary adventures and discoveries, let's commit to making wise, educated choices on our plates. Stay savvy, and here's to eating with awareness.